going on y'all welcome back to the channel today we got a good one highly anticipated we are reviewing the 2020 metanium we picked up an hg left hand model straight from japan we've actually got two okay we got a left hander and a right hander one for me one for my wife and we're going to talk about the best place to buy it okay because we found a killer deal i'm going to include it down in the description if you choose to pick one of these up after you watch the review and see how great this uh this bait caster really is the, the pro's choice okay you can hardly watch uh, a pro tournament video without seeing these things lined up on the deck think of somebody like scott martin he's literally got all metaniums up there on the boat okay and we're going to tell you why i'm over here at guggen hq for the first time in a while because i got to stock up on some fishing line and some baits for today's episode I'm gonna go with almost an all-purpose line setup, and I wanna tell you guys a little bit about uh, the specifics, what we're choosing and why we're choosing it, and hopefully we get out later today and we catch some big fish on this thing. So we're giving you the whole deal, okay, the whole gamut. We're going for the unboxing. We're gonna do the first impressions review, and we're also hoping to find a big fish on this thing, get some, some real use out of it, and, and give you that on the water review today. So go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already and you enjoy the bass fishing content. Let's go ahead and get in here and find some line to spool this baby up. Okay, everybody, so I'm about to show you the secret website where you can actually find this reel for half price. Now, if you're not interested in this and you just wanna see the review, check the description, okay? I've got a timestamp for you. You can head down there and you can just click straight to the on the water review, us spooling it up, showcasing different baits, all that. Okay, so here we are on Tackleware's house. Uh, this is where you're gonna, this is where you're gonna see the retail price, okay? I'm just gonna show you what you're probably gonna pay if you go to like even Cabela's or Bass Pro, any of these local stores. It is priced at $439.99, so $440 before tax. You're closing in on $500 bucks with tax and shipping for this reel right here. So let me show you a few choice places you can actually order this reel imported straight from Japan. These are JDM Direct, okay? And you can have killer savings. I'm going to show you the three websites I recommend if you're considering JDM gear, so you can always check back on these websites. The first one is going to be Asian Portal Fishing. Now, right at this moment, they have no stock of the right-handed HG model, which is probably the most popular. However, they have quite a bit of the other models there. Left-handers are usually harder to come by. And so we have ordered reels from Asian Portal, no others who have as well. So this is a reputable site. And you can see it's priced at $246 on this website. So almost half price, but we haven't found the cheapest yet. Another fantastic website to order JDM gear from is japantackle.com. I just want to bring all these to your attention. That way uh, you can go out there and find the best prices for yourself whenever you're looking to buy new gear. So here's the 2020 Metanium, and it is going for $292. So closing in on $300 bucks at Japan Tackle. So even a little bit higher price than you're going to see here at this last website. Now, here we go, folks. A lot of YouTubers don't want me to share this because this is where they go to get their cheap reels that they're going to do for the reviews. And now more people are going to have the access to getting affordable reels and do reviews and that takes away from their views. Uh, the pros are going to be unhappy because they're always going to go here and they're going to buy this stuff on the cheap and they're going to expect us to pay full price out here. So we're, we're over here paying, you know, 500 bucks for these reels. And so I had to bring this to your attention. This is, we weren't even looking to buy a metanium and we came across this price and that's why we bought two. Okay. So 200, look at the mouse here, $226 US, okay? And this has a lot to do with uh, the re uh, recessionary environment around the globe and the fact that the dollar is uh, <laughs> the dollar is way up against all these other currencies right now. And so you can get a phenomenal deal when you're essentially buying in the Japanese yen here. So over here at Digitaka, you can grab this thing for literally $225. You can save yourself 200 bucks to now go spend on soft plastic baits. You can go spend this money on another rod to pair with this thing. You can get two for the price of one. So I had to absolutely bring this up. And this might be the most important point for anybody watching this video. For one, I'm not receiving anything for this, okay? I'm not sponsored or affiliated with any of these websites. I just saw the deal and I feel it's my responsibility with the platform I've got to share it with all of you. The biggest reward or form of payment to me would just be if y'all hit subscribe because we're going to do future reviews on reels very similar to this in the future and share this with uh, a friend you know who's probably looking to buy a new reel and may end up wanting a metanium and going out and spending 450 plus dollars on it okay if you were to just go right down to the store uh, and so these these websites again are reputable we've ordered through them and so here's that last key point you know this reel is going to be on your boat deck or uh, you know you're going to be hitting the banks with this thing it'll be in your arsenal probably a decade from now okay like we have our metanium dc that was one of our first shimanos we ever bought like in that high-end category right 
about 500 bucks for that thing. And it still operates like day one, almost five years later. Okay. So this is the things you got to think about when you're considering, should I just get an SLX for, you know, 150, like those different models? Should I grab a Corrado? You know, those Corrado Ks are maybe two, no, no, no. I think the Corrado K is maybe 190 right now. You're telling me you can get a Metanium, the pro's choice bait caster for almost the same price as a Corrado? Get out of here, everybody. So you got to think about the reliability and the long-term uh, aspect of owning this reel, okay? So this is something to factor in when you go to spend your hard-earned dollars and you know, 200 plus dollars is still a lot for a fishing reel. But now you know where to get it for the cheapest. And I would say if you want it uh, in a specific gear ratio here, uh, you'd have to scroll back, but you can check it out in the different gear ratios. If you want it in a specific one, the HG, the XG, etc., I would go ahead and get on it because if people, you know, if they see this video or others like it and they know they can get it on, a, on the cheap, the HG is probably going to be the one to sell out the fastest. Okay. So get yourself something for the holidays. You know, it's that time of year and, uh, and then save yourself a couple hundred bucks in the meantime. Now let's go ahead and hit the water. Okay. Uh, we're not going to hold out on you any longer. Let's go ahead and uh, review this thing and we catch some big fish in today's episode. I think you're going to really love it. Let's go. All right, everybody. Here we go. A little bit of a different format from my most recent real unboxing and reviews we're doing it out here right by the water's edge before we do some fishing with this thing right here not too many reels will get you as excited as a brand new metanium shipped straight from japan japanese instruction manuals and information kits and all that good stuff there's really only one or two things i wanted to mention about this though uh, one is that we got the hg or high gear okay so there's the standard gear ratio there's the hg and there's the xg now what that means is the higher or faster gear ratio reels you're going to be reeling in more line for every full turn of the handle that's all it is so there's enough english here for me to read out that the uh, standard is a 6.2 gear ratio the HG is a seven to one, okay? So what that means is that for every full turn of the handle I make on this HG model, the spool is gonna make 7.1 full rotations, okay? You've got some oil. Every once in a while, you'll toss a little bit of that oil right there on the spool, keep it cast in its best and operating like day one, very smooth. And then the reel itself. This is why y'all clicked on the video right here. This is the moment you wanted to see. I mean, whoo. Oh, I'm so pumped to fish this. We're gonna talk about a few things you gotta do before you actually make your first cast if you wanna run this thing optimally. And uh, what I'm gonna pair it up with is a seven foot medium heavy fast action rod, okay? This is the Guggen Squad go-to rod, essentially a rod that's good for everything in your tackle box. I did wanna show you, we have our Metanium DC, okay? We've owned this thing for years and it's still running like day one. And that's one thing I wanted to mention about this reel right here as the longevity you're going to get out of this over something like those cheaper reels. With this new metanium, I'm going to spool it up with 30 pound braid, which is a great all-purpose braid for casting distance and strength, okay? So yeah, you're going to want like 50 pound braid plus if you're like really flipping the heaviest cover or maybe frogging, or maybe you're going to want lighter braid if you're throwing it on a spinning outfit, right? But I think for just kind of general all-purpose use, I'm going to do this 30 pound braid today, and I'm always going to have a leader tied onto this reel if I'm not throwing a top water, okay? Uh, the the top waters that would require straight braid something like a frog so i'm gonna go ahead and spool up the metanium with the 30 pound braid we're gonna tie our fg knot to the fluorocarbon leader then we're gonna get out and fish this thing i've got my braid spool down there on the car seat you just want to make sure that that spool is not flipping around and rotating especially if it's like fluoro or mono because then you'll get a little line twist and that's going to affect your casts with braid it seems to be less of a problem but that spool's sitting still right there so we should be in the money the key is pinching that line and making sure it goes on that spool tight if it goes on there loose it's gonna be rough on those first handful of casts, y'all, until you get that thing nice and tight on there. So pinch that line as you're spooling it up. We're changing into the hot Texas summer attire. All right, so keynotes before you even make a cast into the water, okay? You're gonna get this reel, look at that drag. The spool isn't even open, okay? The spool's closed and look at that drag. It's so loose you wouldn't be able to reel in a fish if you tried. They keep it that way from the factory. That way when it's stored, um, it doesn't just keep that drag tight and those plates pinching up against each other. So you're gonna need to tighten it. Now, if you were using a right-handed reel, you'd be turning it clockwise. Left-handed reels, it's counterclockwise, okay? So tightening it is almost always being turned away from you, okay, on the top there. So now we've got our drag. Oh, let me close that. Yeah, it's tough to even pull that line. So that's what we want for the specific rig I'm fishing. And we'll talk about drag as you fish other lures. But essentially with pretty heavy gear like we've got here, I want it pretty cinched down for fishing something like a Tokyo rig, Texas rig, stuff of that nature, right? Really when I'm gonna lighten off a little bit, back off that drag, and then I can you know, pull that line a little bit, that comes into play when I'm throwing baits 
with treble hooks, okay? This is generalized information, right? So if I'm throwing some moving baits or some treble hook baits, I don't want those little hooks to just get ripped right through their skin after I hook them or for those hooks to bend out because they're smaller and lighter. So that's when I back off the drag and I kind of play those fish out a little bit. And if they need to make a run for it, they can make a run because I'm using smaller hooks oftentimes or maybe lighter line. And that's when you can't afford to have the drag cranked because you'll simply break those fish off, okay? Or they'll break you off, vice versa. So my drag is cranked. Now, for the breaks. So you got one through six on this bait caster. I'm gonna start somewhere in the middle ground. I'm probably gonna start on three and uh, we'll go from there. In fact, there's a little bit of a breeze, I think, once we get to the open water there. So I might even start it off on four out of six and then I'll back off if I feel I need more distance. But I have a feeling, based on my other Shimano's, that four is gonna be a good setting for me here today. Last thing is tension. So you'll see, with the spool open, this, uh, this weight, and I don't even have a plastic on it yet, it's probably gonna fall really fast, okay? So again, I've shown this in a lot of other real unboxing and reviews, but it's super loose right now. So I tightened it up a little bit. And you know, a general rule of thumb for me, when you're first learning how to cast, really, okay? Because you'll, you'll want to loosen this as time goes on. But when you're first learning how to cast, you want it to just have a slow drop, okay? Like that right there. You can even get it to a point where you tighten it a lot and it really barely drops at all. That's going to be good for your high wind scenarios or if you're just learning how to thumb the spool when your bait hits the water or you're just learning how to cast in general, all right, folks? So I'm going to loosen it a little bit from there and I think we're going to get some phenomenal distance and not have to worry about adjusting our brakes or tension potentially for the rest of the evening. But let's see what we've got in store. Let's get a bait on here and we're finally able to hit the water did you catch one already on the frog first cast pierre caught one there's no way that's so legit wow not even making any cast really just kind of flipping it this thing feels so good we got what is that a 3 8 ounce weight right here what's on this thing yeah 3 8 ounce guggen tungsten nuts folks there was literally just a fish right here that we spooked walking up y'all first couple casts i want to tell you this thing is so so smooth there's a little brush pile a ways out there and I'm casting into the wind let's send it no thumb no thumb and I basically made it there and that was with those brakes on four out of six and the tension fairly tight we're gonna back off of it after this cast I'm gonna back off those brakes I'm gonna go down to three that's the SVS infinity braking system I'm down to three on there oh she flies flies I passed the brush I just cast a little to the right of it dude this reel is so light oh my gosh when you're working a bait like the Tokyo rig you gotta be real active with the wrist that's gonna play a big part in the uh, fatigue on a full day is fishing it's not something you notice right off the bat it's something you notice over time so sick little initial feedback is this thing is just unbelievably smooth reeling which we, we should have expected right for a titanium top shelf product and uh, the castability is just ridiculous I mean the casting distance I'm getting I'm throwing it so far and I'm only on the three setting I'm going down to two because these brakes do seem to uh, still be hindering a little bit of extra casting distance. I'm just going to have to thumb it really good. So now I'm down to the two setting and I'm just going to launch this thing. Oh, that thing just got launched a quarter mile. So that's on the two setting. I might get to a point where I'm comfortable enough with this thing in a couple minutes to even into the wind be casting with the brakes on minimum. That just comes down to thumb control as you cast those baits out there. But this 30 pound braid is just sending it. Where are these fish at though? These fish are telling me they want something different based on everything I'm seeing from all these active bait fish running the bank as well as that slight breeze. I'm thinking maybe there's another tool that's going to be a little bit better suited to the job today. So we're going to go ahead and just toss this chatterbait out for a minute. Got him. First fish. First fish. Oh, it's a good one too. Yes. Oh my. Oh no. Unhooked right there at the bank. He's right here. Hold up. Oh, no. Come here. Oh, dang it. Oh, both of my flip-flops are sunk. Oh, that was a good fish right there. I don't know where my other flip-flops at. There you are. Oh my gosh, that was like a three plus pounder. All right, the chatterbait's working. Yes. Wow. Such a good fish too. Golly. <sighs> Let's see where his buddy's at. Oh, okay, I see what happened. We got a little, so when that fish hit, it was exactly how far out the bait is right now. Cause when I set the hook, the braid tightened down into the spool. And that's why I just got that little bit of a backlash on that cast right there. So that's something to think about when you're using braid. It tends to sink down on itself. And there we go back to back. Um, okay, so something's going on with this whole Gamakatsu hook they're charging 20 something bucks for on the old jackhammer. Just not hooking up today with this seven foot medium heavy fast action rod. Very weird. That drag is not loose either. No. 
very weird. All right, we're about to catch another one though. Oh, bass just ate those shad. Oh my gosh. Got him. There we go. Finally, come on. We gotta land one. We gotta at least land one. There we go. First fish on the metanium. <laughs> Woo, buddy. You're a high dollar fish, boy. Metanium, jackhammer, plump little bass up there feeding on stuff that looks just like this. That's exactly what we're doing, matching the hatch. Third time's the charm, apparently, on the hookup ratio. That is our first ever bass on the brand new 2020 metanium straight from Japan, everybody. Let's hunt for something bigger now. Now that we got our feet wet, literally, with this new reel, <laughs> let's uh let's hunt down that monster man let's hunt down them pawn giants oh there we go this one's bigger oh my gosh he smoked the chatterbait that might be a four pounder oh my that's what we're talking about lord that thing smoked it and it's plump okay that one's gonna go for probably three to three and a quarter not quite four i don't think we're breaking out the scale if we get anything that looks bigger than this. That's a solid fish. Yes. Moments later on the chatterbait, roaming the shallows, everybody. Doubled up with Pierre, too. He's still got that one right there, getting his photos. Holy smokes. Once again, everybody, it ain't about day one with this metanium. It's about seeing this thing probably after 10 years of use on this channel. Just wait. You just wait. Those things can handle some abuse. That's why it's the pro's choice. Look at that fish right there. Did not break a sweat, of course. Did not even break a sweat, that reel. All right, buddy. Thank you for that. I thought that thing could have been five plus when it hit. Did you see that go-to rod? I mean, that thing had a bend like I haven't felt in a while. So two fish in, two fish, one quality. We let a few off the hook. And I gotta say, I'm liking my choice on that 30 pound braid. If I had 50 pound braid to that same leader, I wouldn't be getting the same distance. That line is thicker. You can't fit as much onto the spool. And uh, again, for the, the purposes I plan on using this reel for, I wanted something with great castability, not just strength, and 30 pound is, is phenomenal. Now, your fluorocarbon leader, y'all may choose to do something like 10 pound, 15 pound, 20 pound. You know, uh, I would say 15 pound fluorocarbon is gonna be uh, phenomenal to either just spool this reel up with entirely so you don't even have to fiddle with the lead or not. If you've got less cover essentially in your lakes where these bass can really have an opportunity to break you off on, you might not need that 20 pound, okay? In fact, you don't. So something like a 12 or 15, you might get a little bit more bites in those clear water applications and you will probably not need that extra strength. Uh, so that's just something to consider. But what a reel right here, okay? We can't neglect the line obviously because the choice is going to affect uh, the type of baits you'll probably be throwing on it and things of that nature. So again, to have an all-purpose setup, it's exactly what we were looking for in this reel. We've already got some flipping setups. We've already got some frogging setups with that 50 or 65 pound braid. We've got plenty of reels spooled up with the 12 pound fluoro for our cranks. And, and this right here, I, I wouldn't even be scared to throw a crankbait on it. I would just have my fluorocarbon leader. I'd probably drop it down to like 12 pound. That way it can really sink down and cut through the water. But all in all, man, this thing is so smooth. And uh, yeah, like I said, hasn't even broke a sweat yet. So we got to try and find something that's going to put it to the real test. No pun intended. Let's try and find a giant. La, da, 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 da. Oh, very shallow. Oops. Oh, but that didn't mean anything. I still got him. <laughs> nice. Wow, that cast was really shallow. That just goes to show you they're up here feeding on those bait fish. Fish number three on the metanium. I'm going to throw this chatterbait for a minute. It's going to be very hard to put this thing down because I'm getting so many catches, but I do want to show you all some different baits with this reel today. So, number three, back in the water. Whew. I might be forced to tie on a different bait because <laughs> I forgot. I don't think I brought any more saucy swimmers, so I don't have any more trailers. Pierre's got him another one, folks. Look at that right there, that beaver bait. Mm -mm -mm. There it is. Tough to beat a nice night out bank fishing with the boys right here. Bada bang, bada boom. Our bladed jig dreams might not be shattered yet, boys. We got a clickbait in here, and it's got a fresh saucy swimmer on the back. There we go. First one on the clickbait, ladies and gents. There's this gunky grass over here. I don't know if there's a whole lot of bass in this region, but I'm gonna just keep picking it apart, kind of power fishing it, swimming this thing fast. See if we can find one or two more back here. And we did, and we did. And that might be the biggest of the day. Oh, it is. I think, oh yes, that's a good one. I might need to actually get in here and grab this one. Oh, wow, look at you. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mantanium 2020. Come on, folks. Golly, that's hefty. It's going on the scale. Three 
I'll tell you what, I, I thought you were closer to a four, but uh, you know, now that she says that, I can see, you know, you could be a little bit more plump, but that's got the length of a four pounder for sure. If you were a little bit more filled out, let me tell you what, 3.75 are y'all on the clickbait. Biggest one of the day. Switch it up to a saucy swimmer with an underspin, a little bit more natural of a color. Little blade though for the flash still. Just smile, just <laughs> There we go. Slow rolling them. Ah, that was deceiving. I cranked down and I didn't feel him because he was swimming towards me, okay? And then I cranked down even more because I'm like my line's swimming to the left. And then he finally hit. Look at that big gash right there. That's why you gotta keep your line tight. If I gave him any slack, instead of just cranking him in and keeping that rod bent, he would have come right off there. That hook would have just slid out. That's a key tip no matter what reel you're using. I don't care if it's titanium or anything look at this little grass patch i'm gonna act like i'm just a little minnow swimming by here and a bass is probably waiting and look at that he just swirled on it but he missed it wow i just tried to keep my cool and consistently reel it all the way back in that bass was hanging out in there and it should have eaten it but i think i just spooked it he'll come back he'll come back i'm gonna get one or two more casts in here chances are he went out a little deeper so i'm not casting too far i want him to hear the splash of this bait almost like it's a you know, little bait fish jumping at the surface, getting eaten by other bass, kind of get this one fired up, right? They're just predatory creatures, right? So I think I just spooked him instead of him spooking us. Is the only reason why he didn't bite. Golly. Okay. Don't know if we're going to get him. So what I'm going to do, slow down even a little bit more. I'm going to let this thing hit the bottom. I gave that reel some extra slack. Now I'm reeling down to it and I'm just going to creep bottom. Maybe he's swimming a little lower right here. Otherwise, we're just moving on. Man, those isolated grass patches, you can't neglect them. Nice, dude. Woo. Oh, I gotta hit as soon as it hit the bottom. Dude, this one might be okay. Oh gosh, I got. I didn't even start swimming it. I didn't even start swimming it. I haven't seen it yet, it might be small. Oh, I don't think it's small. <laughs> oh, nice, dude. Back to back. Oh, Saucy Swimmer brings in another hog, y'all. That's another three plus, probably looking at Oh, I keep overshooting them, so I'm not even going to say three and a half, but look at a solid fish right there. <laughs> Doubling up, y'all, with the new reel. Golly. That was funny, man. I was fishing it just like you. I just let it fall to the bottom and he ate it. <laughs> Didn't even start swimming it. All right. Here. Yep, they are here. And uh, I think it's time to showcase another bait for you guys because I just ripped that saucy swimmer right off there with that one. It's fun just fishing whatever you want though, you know, as a YouTuber sometimes a new bait comes out and you want to review it or something, uh, well, that's generally what happens. And so you're kind of fishing that whole video just with one bait, whether it's ideal for the day or not. So it's nice doing a little reel review where I can showcase uh, how good it is with just about every bait in the tackle box, right? Um, and not worry about having to throw one bait specifically. I want to throw the dark sleeper, but all of mine I have in here, I have like three of them. They're all broken. See the weight? Ugh, they all get ripped. All right, folks, you know what time it is. I think I'm just going to cut off this whole FG knot I tied earlier, and I'm just going top water. It's game time. I just saw a blow up right here, dude. I'm, I think I'm going to switch to the frog and just throw it for the rest of the night. Frog time, titanium 2020. Let's see what this thing can actually do. I'm going to put these brakes on one, and I'm just going to bomb some casts all the way down. He blew up on it, y'all, but... Oh! <gasps> Knife here! Nice! Nice! Is your drag too tight? He can run, right? Okay. Dude, I think Pierre caught the one right here. It was taking some drag off him for a moment. Oh! <gasps> big, dude! Big! Big! Oh, my gosh. Okay. You know, yeah, let him... Let him... Play him out, okay? He's big. That's a big fish, dude. Dude, this might be your PB. What is your PB? Six. Six? This is gonna be tough, but this is a big fish. Oh gosh, we got him. Oh, that might be... Oh, it's five plus. I don't think it's six, but that's freaking huge, dude. <laughs> My God. Whoa! The Tokyo, Tokyo rig is choked. Oh, got it. That was beautiful. Your bait caster is left or right-handed? You should try this one real quick. I'm gonna throw your right-hander. Oh, it's so different feeling. This rod feels heavy, like weight forward. I'm throwing around Pierre's popping frog. 
I let him throw in the Metanium for a second. Wow, the balance is so much different. It feels like there's no butt end on this rod. Just a little heavy weight forward, that's all it is. Nothing to it, just gotta get used to it. Just like he's gotta get used to one he's throwing now. What a day on the Metanium. We're gonna close this thing out at the house. We're gonna recap this and tell you exactly what we think about it. One last tip, check me out. Throwing those Texas rigs a lot and you're not pegging your weights, check that out. It's gonna slide all over the place. It's gonna bug you while you're driving and whatnot. Look, just wrap that line around the rod. Put it around that eyelet right there. Now it's nice and tight. And now your weight's not gonna shift and you can keep that rod nice and tight in your vehicle. Sometimes you're putting a lot of rods in your vehicle and the line goes all around them and you can't get them out. That'll help you right there. So just wrap it around one time and then put it on that eyelet. Now your weight's not gonna be flowing all over the place. So we'll hit you with a recap in a second. All right, everyone, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. I think you already know what we've got to say about this beast of a fishing reel right here. I mean, the feeling and feedback and sensitivity in this thing uh, because of its one piece construction is literally up there, if not even better feeling in the hand than our Ant Harris DC, which is Shimano's true flagship model that can retail for as much as 700 bucks depending on where you're purchasing this thing, okay? So I cannot recommend this reel enough. You see why it's the pro's choice. Please share this video and get that pricing out there to more friends that you know because I can guarantee you're gonna love this thing for the price point. 226 bucks, you cannot beat it uh, unless you're talking about getting two for one. So that's what I'm gonna leave you guys with. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. Do not forget to subscribe. We'll see you on future real reviews as well as more bass fishing very shortly. Till then, peace out.